look at um, layman's, uh, what's it called? God and the Moral Order. Let's just look at his first three theses there in the beginning. He says, I argue that the three theses about the moral order are defensible. And by moral order, he just means the way morality is. Like, he's obviously an objectivist. You know, the idea that there is a moral order, that there is some kind of, some such thing as moral truth that uh, is not entirely conventional or subjective. So he says, you know, here's the first uh, thesis, that in every actual case, one has most reason to do what is morally required. And he does something to defend that later on. That is, whatever the situation is um, that, uh, you know, we're faced with, where we have to make a choice, that uh, the thing that we have most reason to do is what is actually morally required. Uh, think of, say, Singer's an example of uh, walking by the, the shallow fountain in which a toddler is drowning. Um, it's obvious that that would be a situation in which you are morally required to help the child. That, that's what he means. Now, that's, of course, that's an easy choice. There, there are much more difficult choices. Uh, but in every case, uh, what you have most reason to do is what is morally required. Like you have some reason not to do that, right? To save the child because you don't want to get your shoes muddy or you don't want to be late for class. But it's not the best reason, right? So you, you have most reason to, to, to help the child. So that's just an, an, an actual, you know, uh, or a specific example uh, that in every actual case, one has most reason to do what is morally required. Number two, if there is no God, and no life after, after, shouldn't say alter, after death, then there are cases in which morality requires that one make a great sacrifice that confers relatively modest benefits or prevents relatively modest harms. So if there is no God, if, if atheism is true, or naturalism, as he says, is true, so if there's no God and there's no life after death, then there are cases in which morality requires that one make a great sacrifice that confers relatively modest benefits. He gives this example later on of Ms. Poor, the hypothetical of this person who basically has this unlucky, miserable life where she has a chance to embezzle or steal a million dollars or something from like a millionaire and get away with it. Um, Layman believes that, you, you know, what would be moral to do to do what morality requires would be not to steal because stealing is just wrong. Um, but that would be a great sacrifice on her part that would confer re relatively modest benefits because the guys that she's stealing from is so rich, he would probably not even miss it. Right? So the idea is that um, if I suppose that if there's no God and no after afterlife, then to do what is morally required sometimes means making a great sacrifice that confers relatively modest benefits which is something he has to go into later. And then three, if in a given situation, one must make a great sacrifice in order to do what is morally required, but the sacrifice confers relatively modest benefits or prevents relatively modest harms, then one does not have most reason to do what is morally required. It's a little confusing at this point, but one thing you should notice is that um, one and three are contradictory, right? That is, if you believe one, you can't really believe three, right? If you, if you believe three, that basically that, let's say, Ms. Poor is not, does not have most reason to do what is morally required in her situation. That is, that she has better reason to steal the money than to not steal the money. Then you can't believe one. So we can see where this is kind of going here. That is, um, what he wants us to do is abandon uh, two, right? Because um, two is the game changer. But uh, I think that that is important to note already that, that one and three uh, are, are incompatible, right? And that 
if you change two, if you say there is there is a God and there is a life after death, then um, there may be then you you kind of eliminate the problem. Of course, another thing you can do is abandon one and say it's not true. So we'll we'll talk about that. But I just wanted to get that clear in the beginning that that give you some sense of how these three theses actually relate to each other.